What's up, y'all? It's Friday, and I found some copyright free music on the way. A, A, do be da be be be, do be da be be be. Okay, all right, I gotta turn it down a little bit because I get a little crazy. What's up? What's up? Happy Friday. Um, yeah, we in this V. Last Friday, I was all hyped and chaos always arose. But I'm going to stay positive every Friday. Y'all are not still my shine. I work too hard to get through these weeks and busting through. God is continue to answer prayers for me and my family. And I pray that he is doing the same for you and yours. God is consistent. We just got to be consistent with him. That's all. It's that simple, y'all. No matter how hard it gets, God is always with you. Amen. Amen. Let's get into these. No, well, hold on. Let's talk about my day. What did I do? I I have read one and a half books since I've been on Lent. They've all been about murder and mayhem because I just that's how my mind works. Um, I've been watching Love Is Blind on Netflix. That new season is already gonna be trash. That show proves that love is really not blind because everybody that gets on there either likes each other when they see them or don't or ends up liking the other person that they were talking to. And I think this season, one of the dudes ends up sleeping with the girl he didn't pick once he sees how hot she is. And the only reason he didn't pick her because she had a kid. Go figure. He, he got with this flight attendant because he thought he was going to have free flights, no kids. And then the flight attendant did say she looks like Megan Fox. She kind of, she's like a chunky version of Megan Fox. I mean, she's not an ugly girl, but this, this show is trash. But they continue putting it on and, and I continue watching it because cause they ain't know ain't nothing else on TV. Like they know that about me and they know that about you. Um, other than that, y'all, I really did not do anything else today. Um, uh, just, uh, worked out and, um, I'm, things I've given up for Lynn, I've given up social media, obviously, I'm giving up red meat, I've been giving up, because the reason I, I was gonna do pescatarian, but I still gotta have my bacon, so, I've given up red meat, I've given up sweets, so, you know, and any other, you know, self, soul satisfying flesh, fleshly desires, you know, luckily I'm married, so it ain't too hard to give up most things when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, y'all, let me see what else we got going on. I was looking at this other... Anyway, uh, let's get into this news. Fannie Willis offers a fiery testimony in a hearing of the Trump case. So Fannie, this name always cracks me up. Let's see what she's talking about. Don't you love a good commercial? Can't really watch anything now without commercials. Come on, we see you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the time all this happens, the whole show is going to be over. Hymns.com. 
interference case against former President Donald Trump. Fulton District Attorney Fonnie Willis, the prosecutor overseeing the case, fiercely denied that a personal romance with the colleague presented a conflict of interest. CBS's Nicole Killian reports on the salacious and dramatic details. It, it, it is a lot. It is a lot. In an intense hearing, don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. The tables were turned on Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie Willis, who took the stand for the first time in the same courtroom where she typically prosecutes defendants. So I would ask you to not yell at me. With several of the co-defendants in the 2020 election interference case looking on and former President Trump weighing in on social media, Willis defended her personal relationship with Nathan Wade, a special prosecutor on her team. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. The hearing was prompted by a complaint from co-defendant Michael Roman. A former Trump official, his attorneys, plus another representing Trump, want Willis removed from the case because they say the relationship shows a financial conflict of interest. Willis denied being in a relationship with Wade before he was hired to join the team investigating Trump in November 2021. And it's highly offensive when they the try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them. And I take exception to it. But a former friend and colleague of Willis contradicted What's that account question? under questioning. Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. The attorneys allege Willis personally benefited from her involvement with Wade and was paid more than $650,000 by Willis's office as the pair took lavish trips to California, Florida, and the Caribbean. Willis insisted she reimbursed Wade for the trips. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Willis is expected to testify again Friday. If a judge determines that there was a conflict or any wrongdoing, Willis and Wade could be disqualified from the 2020 election case, or it could be moved to another jurisdiction, which could further delay the proceedings. Nora? Nicole Killian with all the details. Thank you. That is juicy. The friend turned on her. I didn't know it was this hot, y'all. I didn't know the tea was this crazy. Fanny was giving up the panties, baby. That special prosecutor was specially prosecuting some stuff. Like, and listen, she can take lavish trips. Like, she's a DA. She's a lawyer. She got the money. It's really sad. It's sad. And, I mean, unfortunately, when you are prosecuting Trump, you almost have to live a flawless life because you know they're going to look into every situation you got. But not her friend turned on her. Her former friend. This this should be an episode of Law and Order or like something like that. This is going to be... This is going to be a Netflix special, I feel like. I didn't know it was this deep. I've been seeing this, but I just didn't know it was this juicy. Um, Wow. FBI informer lied about Biden's business dealing special counsel alleges. Iowa's Caitlin Clark breaks the NCAA basketball scoring record. Two juveniles are detained in the deadly Kansas City Chiefs parade shooting. Trump's first criminal trial is set for March 25th, the judge in the hush money case says. Well, Trump's trials... White House confirms that Intel is showing that Russia is pursuing an anti-satellite capability. Six-year-old is charged with murder in the Bronx subway shooting. Survivors come together to revive calls for a federal assault rifle ban. Paul McCartney's stolen Bass guitars returned more than 50 years later. Miami Beach details measures to curb crowds, violence during spring break. Yeah, they put that curfew in effect. There is a massive oil spill near Trinidad and Tobago. Blamed on barge being tugged. Non-LA firefighters are injured after an explosion involving 
a natural gas truck. Putin claims he favors more of a predictable Biden over Trump. Said he would prefer Biden to be the next president. A lot of people are saying he's just saying that. Delta flight with maggots on a plane forced a turnaround. Now, that was a crazy story, y'all. They were scheduled to fly from Amsterdam to Detroit in the turnaround mid-trip after maggots were discovered aboard the aircraft. An airline spokesperson confirmed that the flight 133 was interrupted due to an improperly packed carry-on bag without providing additional details as to the cause of the disruption. The spokesperson added that customers were compensated for the inconvenience but did not elaborate. How is there maggots in your plane? I just, I just don't even get it. How did that happen? What was in that plane? to cause those magnet maggots is so disgusting i would not be okay and i bet you they just gave them a free hotel voucher or something crazy let's see what else is going on that fanny case they call her fanny but i'm saying fanny that case is too hot to trot baby it was too much too much all right, let's see what else we got here, y'all. The news was really kind of slow for real today, which is good. Because that means there was no mass shootings. Tinder and Hitch dating apps are made to addict users, lawsuit claims. No stuff as of all apps that have swiping and clicking and liking. Not shocking at all. All right, y'all. Let's look into what else I got here. what I was looking at earlier I was trying to see I was going to play this Drake video where he caught sexy reds water breaking but it's just a part of a video and it's just it's not even real and Drake just annoys me so I just don't want to uh, Deontay Waters brother says water smashed two of his ex-girls and his current girlfriend he said, you trying to say your brother smashed your girls? Trust stop. Get out of my way and let me go. You want to go get out of my way and let me go? Because I don't want you to say I hit you, I did anything. Because you would do that. No, I won't. Let me go die, Joseph. Trust let me go. Mm. What you mean? Why? Because you cheated on me. You cheated on me. You had sex with me Monday, and now you go Tuesday and have sex with another guy. <laughs> Justin, let me go. Please stop. Let me go home. Justin, stop. <laughs> you drunk. Fuck your career, my Talk nigga. I care about you. Mama, Fuck your career. I care about you, bro. Fuck everything. It been set me up, bro. You set me up. You ain't nothing you going through it has been worse than what I've had to do and go through. You don't want this shit, and you done proved it to me. So with that being said, I'm done with you and your career. Don't ask me nothing about no boxing or none of that shit. And like you said, you'll get it on your own, so good luck with that. By the way, you ain't gonna have nobody, and you gonna, boy, I ain't wishing bad up on you, but I, I'm experienced. You understand me? I can see shit happen before it happens because of the experience. And if you hit rock bottom, you gonna be, that's gonna be it, bro. It's gonna be hard for you. I'm gonna let you know that right now. This ain't nothing. I'm uh, this experience of seeing certain shit, but you know you can take my word for nothing. But that's it. I'm gonna keep my sixty thousand. I want you to go out and try to find a job. See, can you get sixty thousand dollars? Uh, see, can you find a job to equal yours right now? It's gonna be tough. But you choose your own fate, my nigga. We all do when we got to. It's too stressful for me. I can keep my sixty. So 
This gonna be my last. I promise you can hold this. You can hold this recording right here. I already know what it is, man. A lot of the brothers up in this thing, Bomb Squad, all day to the day we die. Bomb Squad, um. It's messed up that his brother smashed his girlfriends, if this is true, allegedly. But you gonna let money come between women? Like, hoes, be bros before hoes. Like, these girls, they not worth you to get mad over messing your career up and your relationship with your brother. The girls gave it up to your brother. They the ones that's the problem, not your brother. Sorry. Um, let's see what else is in here, y'all. That was messy, but I am a world star, so it's not shocking. Uh, see what else I seen out here earlier, y'all. Laying the points, and I'm taking the over. Those combo guards don't miss from three. Trays all day. I ain't got no kids because nobody like you. If you're over 30 and you're a male, if you're not have no kid past 32, likely you're sus. You might be a batiman, <laughs> or your piss just can't burn grass. I love the term batiman, bati boy, batiman, which means gay. Um, if you're over 30 and you don't have kids, into the in the old school days, yes, but today's world, no. Because people just aren't procreating anymore. So I wouldn't say that you were gay in today's world if you're over 30 and don't have kids. I just think this new generation, they ain't doing all that. Back in the day, yeah, I would definitely say you was probably suspect. Um, Let's see what else is on here, y'all. This is some R-rated version of Martin. I don't know what this is, but I dare. Let's click and see. Look, Martin, that's your boy. You better get that motherfucker a job. First of all, no, no bitches be telling me. I bet your mama got some big titties. <laughs> and put it in the bowl, Carl. Because today they don't clean up out of no bag. And pull your skin back, too. <laughs> Gina ain't here now. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man. Motherfucker audience tripping and shit. Yeah. Shut up and give me those lips. You want them to lift? Yeah. I'm about to get dizzy, too, girl. I'm the bloody <laughs> on the street. I mean, I'm home. Don't waste my time. We need some They need to bring like back Martin uncut just one good time. Like, I bet those uncuts were funny as heck. Nowadays, they got so many shows like that anyway. It's like, why not? Let's see what else is on here, y'all. Laying the points, and I'm taking the over. Those combo guards don't miss from three trays all day. What defines being a nice guy versus being a good man? Oh, I can't stand nice guys. What can't? What's the difference? They, they are people pleasers to me. When I hear nice guy, and remember, you have to remember how I associate to the word nice. Nice means you want to make other people happy. Nice means you are walked over easily. Oh, I feel like nice guys finish last because they're always putting everyone else before them. Her. Whereas a good man. He stands ten toes down. He stands ten toes down. Yeah. I respect a good man. I don't necessarily respect a nice guy. They gonna come for me on that one. It's gonna be a lot of hurt people in the comments. Oh, okay. This is this is a more okay. Right. I got we got two more. Okay. So the next one is this is juicy. Why are some men insecure around strong women that are about business? 
You have experience in this area. Oh, how long we got? We have time. <laughs> Returning to nice guy versus good man. Mm, I haven't delved deep into that. I really have not thought up. I mean, to me, what is a good man? What is a nice guy? I mean, bad men can pretend to be nice. I don't really think there's nobody to their core just so nice all the time. Normally, those are red flag kind of people. It's like nothing makes you mad. You're always happy. Yeah, that would scare me. All right, let's see what else is on here, y'all. Yeah, let's get over to, let's see, one more. I think the news is very slow today. It was really nothing going on. I think there's news that Cardi B and Offset are still together. Zendaya went viral for her Dune outfit. She had her little cheeks out. And, of course, I, I would have to go to TMZ and see it. I saw it earlier on there. Mike Epps and Shannon Sharp made peace. Usher, for some reason, is still talking about his old flames. I don't know what he's got going on that he's bringing up this kind of stuff. Um... Let me see. Because this little Zendaya outfit was something else. Zendaya always is wearing some interesting outfits. She wore some kind of little bot outfit. It's kind of cool. One thing about Zendaya, she, wore, she is always wearing something really interesting, to say the least. The rest of these people in their Dune outfits. Yeah cool right i i will have it's been so long since dune one i'll have to go back and watch it because i don't even remember what happened in dune one honestly yeah cardi b enjoyed valentine's day together in miami but they're still not together supposedly as long as they continue to keep us out of their business they can do whatever but clearly them eating out together in public is gonna get people speculating Mahomes and crew went to a private party with Kelsey at a restaurant after the shooting they like F it we still gotta celebrate Jane Fonda is concerned about JLo and Ben's marriage like you're trying to prove something I agree Jane Fonda what does it even mean such a weird matchup Rihanna and ASAP Rocky uh, trolled by Parisian paparazzi while they were on Valentine's Day out in Paris for Valentine's Day. Somebody, I feel like Jackson Mahomes is paying TMZ because they're saying that he was helping children. And we all know that this boy, he needs as much good publicity as he can get. Bruce Willis was with his wife on Valentine's Day. Looks like he is doing good, although he has his dementia going on. There's Travis Kelsey posing with a cop in, after the shooting. I mean, the man got to eat after all that drinking he did. The hot ones, that wing show dude... He is in a relationship with a porn star. This is how you know money can buy you stuff. Because this dude would have never gotten this girl if he wasn't on that little TV feeding people chicken wings that are too hot. Alright, y'all. Most of this news is like this YouTuber. I don't know him. I wonder if my son does. His name is Too Mad. Dead at 23 for a possible OD. I have no clue who that young man is, but sad. This is Travis Kelsey singing his drunk on stage song, which 
didn't get a lot of play, which I thought that should have been the highlight of the day, and then shooting just ruined it. But, yeah, this Kelsey song was pretty funny. He should release it. After some time goes by, he should come back and release that song. it was marred by violence but I had to come back and run that back because it was funny it's sad that that got ruined let's get into these reddits y'all let's see what we got on here today Taylor Swift got to help Kelsey out with his singing People who effed around and found out, what did you find out? About six years old, having a picnic with my dad by the lake, some ducks were up near his dad says, you know ducks will bite you. That's silly. They don't even have teeth. Stick your finger out there and see for yourself. Got bit and cried. Now see, I didn't even know that. I know ducks got teeth, but I didn't know they would bite. I chased a giant white squirrel and found out it was actually a skunk. Skateboarding is not easy. Not at 40 anyhow. My husband could attest to that. Putting a 9 volt battery on your braces is not a great idea. It melts the rubber bands and you have to explain it to the orthodontist. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand. I definitely put a battery on my tongue when I was younger. I don't know why we like to do this as humans. Kept pushing back for my wisdom teeth removal, not putting money aside for it. And lo and behold, the pain went from zero to 100 quickly, and I finally took them out. Thankfully, the rest of my teeth were fine and happy. I still got my wisdom teeth. I still have all my teeth. Ignoring medical problems, don't make them to go away. Decided that the tender age of eight or nine that I was immune to poison ivy since I spent quite large amounts of time outside and had never once gotten a rash from it since I was born a science since I was a born scientist apparently I decided to test this by rubbing an agrogerous amount of the plant all over my upper body. Needless to say, I was not immune in the slightest. Knock on wood, I've never got poison ivy on me, and I never want to. Don't mouth off to the judge or he will throw the book at you. I was late for work and starving. The chicken I pulled from the fridge for a quick dinner smelled a little weird. 
but it was organic and I had roasted it myself, so it must be fine. So very wrong. 18 hours of pure hell. I would have gone to the hospital, but I literally couldn't get off the bathroom floor. Fainted twice and ended up with a black eye from hitting my head on the toilet. When in doubt, throw it out. If it don't smell right, don't eat it. That is rule number one. Women of Reddit, what lie did you believe to be true about men that you discovered was false? That men don't gossip. Men gossip more than women, in my opinion. Especially in today's era of man. My dad was a knack. Something not right about our house, car, computer, appliance, or dog. You don't have to explain. He already fixed it. I genuinely thought that this was inherited, inherent in men because my dad makes everything look so easy. Yeah, not all men are the same. I've been told men get boners when they run. Since I don't know many men, my only family is my mother and all my friends are female. I fully believed it and never even questioned it. Spoke to a guy a few years later and mentioned this. Apparently men do not get boners when they run and I got absolutely BS. Yeah, that's strange. I grew up in a household where men didn't find things cute. I was very surprised in high school when a guy friend would say things like, where things were cute and actually meant it not sarcastically still think about men finding things cute to this day my wife was surprised that men could be organized when she moved in with me and my place was very tidy some men do know how to clean my wife was really blown away when i knew how to cook matter of fact i do all of our cooking yeah, get you a man that knows how to cook. It'll save your life. My mom basically told me that every man would rape a woman given the chance. Obviously, she was wrong. There are lots of decent men in the world. And your mama was telling you some crazy stuff. The amount of women I've read on Reddit that believe if a man gets a boner he's sexually aroused is astonishing. On this subject, you know how men get morning wood and random boners throughout the night as well. Women do too. Apparently, it swells in the mornings and throughout the day. I thought that was a cool fact. I've never noticed it personally, but mine likes to hide. So they just get full of blood throughout the day for no reason. Hmm. I didn't think men could feel insecure. Yeah. What are you starting to like as you get older? Silence and nature. And the more older I get, the more nature I love. As I get older, I'm beginning to appreciate the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance and instead of constantly chasing after success. That sounds great, but in this economy, you got to chase after some dollars just so you can have that nice balance. Being in bed by 10, nothing to do. Yes, I love boredom. I wish for boredom. When I was young, I was bored because I had nothing to do. Now I dream of days when I have nothing to do. Yes, amen. Last Friday, I just knew that was going to be me, and it absolutely wasn't. But I'm going to still pursue that every weekend. I need a day where I don't have nothing to do. Been, being young, didn't appreciate it at that time. Yeah, I remember just being able to jump off things, go down the stairs. My husband laughs the way I go down the stairs. Cause I tell him everything I do now, I preserve my knees. I only say, I only use my knees when I, it's like extreme. Like I got to really do something. Like I'm just not jogging around all the time. <sighs> not having plans. Staying home on Friday nights. I love staying at home on a Friday night. I love it. All right, y'all. Let's uh, get into these last few story times. I don't know what we're going to do next week, y'all, because I have no story times left. 
I'll find a way to entertain you per usual, but yeah, these are the last few, so let's see what we got. They'll be on America's Most Wanted. It'll be airing tonight on Fox. It will be on Hulu tomorrow, Tuesday. My father's Davy Alperan, and he's wanted for his crimes against children. He has over 20 victims. One of the victims is my daughter. My father's a vile, disgusting pedophile. He's been doing it his whole life and intimidating and threatening and bribing and guilting these young girls to not say anything. My father wasn't the only one trying to intimidate these girls and keep them quiet to make sure they didn't say anything. His family did too. They tried to keep a few of the girls silent. The same family that came to my house and begged me to not call the cops for my dad. My aunt literally came to my house and told me that it happened to her daughter a few years ago and she had to swallow it because it was her brother. Again, as I said in my last video, I could never. As a mother, I could never. We had no idea he was this monster until we exposed him and everyone came forward. This whole sweeping under the rug thing needs to end. Our children need to be protected, not the abusers. This has not been an easy road at all. My sister and I are exhausted, especially her, because while I was focusing on my daughter's healing journey, she was doing a lot of the posting, the sharing, the working with the cops, all of that. Once I felt like I was in a good place with my daughter, I joined her, and our team became even stronger. We will move mountains for our children. I truly believe that thanks to America's Most Wanted and John Walsh, his son Callahan Walsh, that my father will be found. I really pray and I hope that this reaches the right hands and that they decide to do the right thing. So again, guys, continue sharing and reposting. Tonight, it will be airing on Fox and tomorrow on Hulu. Thank you guys once again for your support and always sharing our videos, commenting, telling others, keeping eyes out, giving us tips. Because of you guys, it got this big. Thank you. I didn't even know America's Most Wanted still came on. But yeah, I couldn't even imagine protecting an abuser. And I do not believe in protecting abusers and pedos. And you just have to imagine if they're doing it in your family, of course they're doing it outside of your family. So although you're keeping a family secret, they're probably somewhere while they're not bothering y'all, bothering somebody else. So hopefully they do find the guy. So I'm in a negotiation room at the Mustang Ranch. There is a small couch in here where we sit and talk. This is the room where I ask people, what would you like out of this experience? And they tell me everything that they want to do. And then we talk about budget and price and we come to an agreement. Or we don't. If we don't come to an agreement, I take them back to the bar or let them out the side door so that they can leave whatever they'd like to do. But if we do come to an agreement, I have to visually inspect them for signs of STD before I accept their payment and we move forward towards any sort of party. So we have this little station in the corner of the room. This is the lamp that I use to spotlight them and I just have them drop their pants and then I will put gloves on. There's gloves of every size in here. You put gloves on both hands because we're gonna get all the way up in there. And we even have baby wipes. These are soaked with isopropyl alcohol. The inspection involves getting your gloved hands and this baby wipe in every nook and cranny. And if they flinch because of the alcohol on the wipe, you know that they have an open sore. Now, an open sore doesn't necessarily immediately disqualify you. You can have an open sore in your pubic region for a lot of reasons. Chafing, heat rash, nicked yourself shaving. There's all sorts of things that could be going on. It's just one way that we know to extra look in that nook or cranny. Part of the training that we get when we first arrive and are trained by the madam is to identify STDs and then we do refresher courses on that over the years. But mainly we are looking for genital warts, genital herpes, because those can be shed via skin to skin contact. Only once in a blue moon do people come in here and we have to tell them, hey look, you have an STD and I can't have any direct contact with you. It doesn't mean that we can't do something for you. As long as you keep all of your clothes on, I can do a toy show for you. All right, the lighting is much better in here. So anyway, when I have had to tell people, hey, you've got something going on and I cannot provide any services to you today, I am direct with them, I'm respectful, and I make sure if they are local, I give them recommendations for a doctor to see. 
And you're sitting there thinking, why would they even come here? A lot of people are very uneducated about sexual health and STDs, and you don't know what you don't know. And I have found the public to be very ignorant on a lot of subjects. Only one time in my whole career have I had a person come in here, and it was a dude, because of course it was, and him be like, well, I knew what was going on, but I figured it'd be okay because y'all just wrap it up anyway. And then there was a time that I was about to party with a couple, got down to the inspection. She was totally fine. Nothing. He was having a gnarly herpes outbreak. And she was pissed. She went out of the room and was about to run all the way out the building. I chased her down, talked to her about doctor's options, and just let her vent to me. He had told her that this had been going on his whole life. And the relationship was so new, they were in that honeymoon phase, and she just believed whatever he said because she was madly in love with him. And girl, I've been there, and we not judging you. And now you would think it's an awfully precarious situation. You're in that tiny little room, and this stranger, and you've asked him to pull his pants down, and now you're all the way up in his business, kneeling down with gloves. I have never had a man act up and like try to shake his shit in my face before. Not ever. They are scared. They're bricking it. They think it's some sort of size test and that we are judging them. And based on whether we like it or not, we don't say no. No matter how big or bad or tough a man has ever acted to me before, when we get in that negotiation room, his fragile ego shows. After doing all that with the inspection and lifting it up and seeing the hair and razor bumps and and everything, and then y'all still got to proceed forward with the sexual act. Yeah. I don't even know how he could do it. Like, getting gloves on and all that, and then it's like, okay, let's get down to business, big boy. Like, what? I actually took the fingerprints off the gun and wiped it down. And I told my brother that um, he he got hysterical. He had an emotional breakdown because once again, this is reality now. This isn't some idea that's in our head anymore. This is reality. These are Catherine and Curtis Jones. When Catherine was 13 and Curtis was only 12, they became the youngest people to ever be tried and sentenced as adults. In the eyes of the law, they had committed first degree murder, but no one seemed to look at the absolute horror show their childhood was. At one point it was, I was just so happy to be away. You know, and I know that sounds really, really messed up, but there was just some point where I was just away from all that and I was by myself and, and I was safe. I'm all inside dealing with the pain of the sexual abuse that I was experiencing from the age five to the date of my incarceration. When they couldn't take it anymore, the Jones siblings took out all of their rage and frustration on their father's girlfriend. And it would take a long time until people would stop seeing them as the psychopathic predators. This is the full story of Catherine and Curtis Jones, how they became juvenile murders and how they escaped a world of pain. In 1985 in Florida, Curtis Jones and Stacy Parks had their first baby, Catherine. In May of the following year, Curtis Jr. came along. From the outside, they looked like a young, happy family of four. But Stacy wasn't happy. Curtis was a vicious physical abuser, and the abuse had started as soon as the pair began dating. When Stacy was pregnant with Catherine, Curtis beat her so badly, her uterus broke, and Catherine had to be born early. Imagine living in a house like that. And you know how abuse usually only gets worse if it's not addressed? Well, it did. And by 1989, Stacy couldn't take it anymore. She left her family and fled to her parents in Kansas. Her two kids were just toddlers at that time, but she couldn't take them with her. It broke her heart, but she left, hoping to reunite with them one day. Sadly, this day would never come. Catherine and Curtis Jr. stayed with their dad. All was well. The kids loved Curtis Sr. deeply, and judging by the photos, they seemed to have a great time together. But just a couple of years after Stacy left the family home, Curtis Sr. invited a male relative to live with them. Whether it was to help him financially or to have some company, who knows. But this was the beginning of the end for the Jones children's happiness. I was the ultimate actress, a professional at being a A-plus student, social butterfly, perfect kid on the outside while inside dealing with the pain of the sexual abuse that I was experiencing from the age five to the date of my incarceration. That's right. The male relative would abuse Catherine sexually 
literally constantly since she was kindergarten age and she wasn't alone. I didn't know that it was both until it did happen. And um, when I finally did tell my family, I, I think it was the second or third time I ran away from home and HRS got involved. And um, when they said that they would take us out of the house, I denied it. I said, no, never mind. You know, I don't want to push through with this, even though, you know, in the report, you know, they said there were indicators of abuse. And um, my brother told me he believed me. He said, I know it's true because it's happened to me too. Catherine and Curtis had always been close. That's a sad story. Let me see what happened because I'm going to... I did not get the part two. Because I hate when they cut it off anyway. Uh, let me see. It's a bunch of articles. So here it is here. They're finally set to leave prison after 18 years. They're 30 now are set to leave the prison system this summer, nearly after two decades. Back in 99, at 12 and 13, they became the youngest people in the U.S. to be charged with adults. As our Palm Beach and Broward County juvenile defense attorney says, know that the two were caught in a criminal justice system after killing their father's girlfriend. While some argued the two murdered Sonia and Nicole Spites because she was still in attention away from them, the two said they killed as an act of revenge for sexual abuse. Catherine Jones had told her brother about how a male relative had pleasured himself while watching her shower after what is now the Florida Department of Children's Families declined to move forward with an investigation. Catherine began to plot the murder of her father, her male relative, and Spites. Curtis offered to help. The two targeted Spites because they thought she allowed sexual abuse to continue, but after firing at her nine times and striking her fatally four times, the children, just 12 and 13, realized their mistake and initially reported the incident as an accident after they fled and hid out in a wooded area. Police eventually found them and they became the two youngest people in the history of the United States to be charged as adults. As our Palm Beach and Broward County juvenile system Lawyers said the two children facing life sentences agreed to plead guilty to charge of second degree murder for which they were sentenced to 18 years in prison to be followed by lifelong probation. They then gave them probation for life. Because of the plea of deal agreement, there was no trial or testimony. There's no opportunity for Curtis and Catherine and their attorneys to show the documentation from the agency and would later be renamed the Department of Children and Family Services. Those documents show that welfare investigators had come across signs on multiple occasions that both Curtis and Catherine were being abused by a certain family member. A certain family member who, according to Florida Today, had previously been convicted of sexually assaulting his girlfriend's daughter back in 93. In addition, the children family never had the answer for why they had failed these two children after acknowledging abuse and why they closed their investigation. Um... I just want to see if they're going to turn over that lifelong probation because that is not cool at all. You know, DFS fails children so much is sad. All right, y'all. What's not sad? It is finally the weekend and I am determined to stay positive no matter what. That We are covered. We are saved by God's grace. Y'all have an amazing weekend. And just stay blessed, y'all. You deserve the rest. You deserve the blessings. You deserve it all. Stay good. Peace.